through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Ryan Onan, writer, director, co star. What's Presumably, up, I don't know, there's probably other things in there with a little indie <laughs> film like this. And uh, Michael Weston. Craft service. Big, uh, beefy. Uh, I don't know. Well, there's a camera right there, they can tell that you're obviously not. I was making that up on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. he's actually way smaller. Than yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you guys are the co stars and band behind Brooklyn Brothers Beat the Best, which is a. Uh, a lot of alliteration, which I, I, I appreciate, but a somewhat complex name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, had the film play at SIF. You guys are now back in town promoting the film because it's being released theatrically, at least mm-hmm. here Friday. I don't know about beyond Yeah, it there. opens in the, um, places on the West Coast on Friday, like uh, Seattle. It opens in Portland, opens in Los Angeles, uh, mm-hmm. Palm Springs. Okay. Um, <laughs> Palm Springs. Yeah. I can't forget that, you know, got got a little connection. Um, So the film is essentially about two musicians who are dropped by their bands, who sort of find a uh, chemistry together and go out on the road and try and find their way in the world. And what is it like? I mean, this is your first time directing a feature. I mean, you're, you're both, I mean, still working your way up in acting what is it like to sort of work on a project like this where it's really you guys at the core of this movie all the way i mean not only just acting but the music the band like there's a lot of responsibility on you guys going into this movie um you know it's a it's a lot of fun man it was a i mean that's the bottom line it was it was a blast i mean I wanted to to direct something that I cared about, about a subject that I cared about, and you know, the kind of struggle I guess of of an artist attempting to to find his way. I guess I mean, is an old story. It's not mm. a new story, but it's not, but it's not necessarily even just an artist. It's kind of anybody that's trying to pursue a dream or trying to do something that feels a little beyond them. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we had a great group of people that came together to make this this film, and they all. Um, Really you don't really have time to think about it. I mean, like, you shoot this in, like, 18 days. So, like, you shot this in 18 days? Yeah, so man. It was so 18 like, days. Was no All of the music about... was recorded live. Yeah. Nothing was pre-recorded or wow. looped in afterwards. It was, yeah. uh, it was a run and gun, my friend. Well, that was sort of <laughs> the biggest revelation when I started doing, you know, my research, which is, like, Wikipedia and a few other places. <laughs> but uh, you guys actually got a recording contract out of this movie because that was initially one of the things like i had read that you were a musician going into it and you had done i think you had written all the music before the movie presumably um i'm uh, um, i mean not all of it it was uh, some of it was written beforehand some of it was written as i was writing the script and then some of it was literally like written right as we were about to <laughs> right. start shooting but you i didn't know anything about your musical background i was just there is none my friend <laughs> Uh, ac- ac- according to Wikipedia, they they said uh, I think your grandfather was a conductor for a Philharmonic or no, something. My, my grandfather was, was a crazy talented uh, concert pianist, Arthur Rubinstein. But that unfortunately did not rub off on me. <laughs> See, I, I was I was wondering about that. I was like, maybe there's some sort and of there's gener- something different about the baby grand like piano or concert piano versus grand just piano. the baby piano. Versus, yeah, versus the baby piano. <laughs> Because the Fisher Price Little Tykes piano is way harder. Well, that, that's Keys that's are way more colorful. <laughs> There's a whole other thing you got to do. See, they stick a, sometimes. That seems a like flat. a selling point for it, if anything. Like yeah. I, w- I would like a much more colorful piano and with some sticks and stuff like that. I, I, I think I think I do too. The, the, yeah. the key stick, it, you know, it's a little. It takes uh, it takes a great amount of skill. Luckily, I was. I mean, you know, I don't like to put this on my bio all the time because <laughs> it just feels like bragging. But uh, I was ahead, in humble the, brag. the conservatory for Toys R Us. Uh, you know, as a child, I was plucked from the womb, and they put me in the conservatory with two other children. Um, <laughs> and uh, and we worked for for two years on just rattles, and uh, and then we. Uh, they don't let you start out with anything else, like no. Uh, it's like Juilliard, you know. They don't give you text well, for a I, long time. I think you're like, sillier. yeah, Maraca or something would be a natural transition from a rattle, you know. Yeah, and or the you Shakers. know the, sh- the shaker egg, oh, rice shaker mm-hmm. eggs. Yeah. I had those uh, at the age of three. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, and then uh, and then we moved on to the little Casios that everyone had, um, you know, thrown out after five years old. 
Well, you sure uh, you're sure at a wide variety of uh, those instruments in yeah, the dude, movie. I actually have like a, a hard case of um, of baby toys that I log to and fro in the airports now. Uh, <laughs> he literally will go up to like a you know, like a real musician. Homeland hard Security case. will yeah. be like, "Whoa, there's way whoa, too many whoa. like uh, like mechanisms inside of that case. Let's open that up." And then they're like, "Whoa, what the fuck?" <laughs> I, I, I would be more worried that they look at it and be like, "Oh yeah, where, where's the child?" Okay, there's a man with all his instruments <laughs> yeah, and no is, child. I've been detained the next many a time. Is like <laughs> detained this man. Did you sick <laughs> balls? What? They have dogs. Those are the guys with dogs. You can't follow preschool with sick balls. What? But you can follow. You can follow that. That was the other thing that occurred to me while watching this movie is that it almost felt like there had to be some sort of element of autobiographical stuff going on because, like, the Jimmy Johnson thing. Oh, Jimmy that's John- true. Like that, that. That was like that monologue is uh, that is autobiographical. Well, I, like, I am a eunuch. Ryan has no penis. Just, it's the it's truth. It was so and like, shiny down there, intense like a, and detailed. Like I was like, this feels Kendall. like this has to come from some sort of. Yeah, it's a really. It was actually hard for me because you know we're all in the car, you know, shooting that monologue together and and you know i'm i'm doing this monologue and it's you know it's very it's got a lot of humor in it but i i just look over and ryan is just like in tears tears streaming down my blood coming out of his nose and he's just like really (laughs) upset just uh mourning the loss of my genitalia yeah i can can imagine it being sad i was very happy to be intact and that's why (laughs) i don't i don't neuter any of my animals any of my cats bob barker is going to be displeased with you so you don't want you don't want to get on his bad side well you know what you want to like him when he's bob can go fuck himself because bob has a penis (laughs) from what i've heard i i I can't verify that one way or another he very well might have neutered himself in solidarity but uh, and now he's pissed and that's why he fights against it but he can't really get pissed <laughs> Don't die. Don't die. Like <laughs> Pour some out for Bob Barker. You can't really get that this. The hormones just won't let it. Uh, oh. one, of, one of the things I liked about the movie was the sort of um, unique, really sort of serious angle of it while being funny at the same time. Like the opening scene with Jason Ritter, where he's like, Jason Your shit is it. just awful, man. Like, <laughs> And you're like, no, no, I, I can change. I can write about werewolves. Like, it, was just, it was just like the saddest thing and the funniest thing at the same time. Like, how difficult was it sort of balancing, like, you know, the comedic aspects with also being dramatic at the same you know time? What? I love personally all my favorite comedies are always so rooted in drama and are treated like drama. Like, my favorite show of all time is the the UK office. And mm. all of their stuff is just so rooted in, like, awkward, like, dramatic comedy. Or, like, all, all my... I mean, even, even stuff like Ghostbusters back in the day, which, like, I mean, I love that movie so much. Those guys, they treat it like it's it's drama. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I, I don't know. I, you I also had, that. like, this awesome array of, like... Like 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 Jason Ritter, Wilmer Valderrama, and like you know all these awesome actors like Christopher McDonald, like all these Melissa actors, Leo, Melissa yeah. Leo, like which, McCarthy, they which just almost came like and killed it, totally know? passed. Like I'd read the little the press notes or whatever that they said maybe like oh Wilmer Valderrama, Vol- Vol- uh, Melissa Leo are on this thing, and I, I noticed them, and then like the end credits came as like Melissa Leo, and I was like holy shit, who was Melissa Leo? And then I'd like Melissa see- Leo played my nephew. That's how fucking yeah, good she, she, she is, she, man. She, she is like an enigma, um, for sure. But like, I had to scroll back and like rewatch part of it, just to be like, I think this is who Melissa Leo is. But I'll get, yeah. that was all based off of man. Um, I, it's a lucky thing to be able to, you know, to start off as an as an actor before a director. I, th- I think just in the sense of like, you have those relationships of like people that you know will do you favors and stuff. I mean, the amount of generosity, kind of you know thrown at me by my friends like melissa is such a lovely person and such an incredible actress like we'd done a movie together she played my mom in this movie called the Dryland, and we just became really close and when i was going to direct something she was like right i'll be the the person playing the uh, pouring the coffee in the back she was just so awesome and that goes across the board ritter was like that um wilmer is just is such an awesome awesome dude and so funny i mean they brought their talents i was you know Probably more than I deserved. They brought they brought their their serious A game and showed up and just mm. you know just you made definitely my life. don't don't deserve. I that. don't think so either. <laughs> the only person I will say I totally deserved was probably you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was fate. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's a good question. How did how did sort of this come together with the two of you? Were you, you involved with casting with him, or what exactly was? The he process? is my employee. 
He works for me. I'm the world's cheapest employee. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good uh, role to have, yeah. It is. I, uh, I relish that role. Once. It's like a borderline sweatshop, like working with him. Yeah, like he... It's... <laughs> <laughs> you know, we met, we actually met at uh, in an audition. Um, you know, we were two actors sort of going in for the same part. And, I uh, just dominated it. Just crushed totally it. totally did not get that part. I walked out, I said, everybody go home. He did come out saying I crushed it. <laughs> and to all the other actors, not like, turn around who is this douchebag? That's, true. That's, really that's weird. If, if I were an actor, that's what I would do too. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would trash oh, they already, yeah, they already like, guys. Me, they already gave yeah. me the role, guys. So, I, go good home. luck, guys. But I think I got it already. And everybody go just kind of like looked at me and were like, "Yeah, yeah you didn't get the role." And right. I was like, "What do you mean?" Did, like some weird end zone dance and just sort of I'm shuffling around. Totally trash talk that shit all the time. That's what I would do. Absolutely. Like, so I went out there to take out his kneecaps, and then I jumped. It wasn't that that difficult to jump high and land directly on his back with my feet. <laughs> <laughs> and we met at that audition, yeah. And yeah. Uh, and was that fly in my coffee? Get the hell out of here, man! As he was in your coffee before, I like that. I saw a lot that he better. was right there. Yeah. I don't know. You brushed him over to my. Coffee. I like this. I like it so much more when it's on I, your coffee. I, I really like that he's walking around your home. See room. the <laughs> responsibilities of your job. Isn't that written into your contract that you have to take the flies from his coffee? Yeah. Or? No way, man. That's a line item. <laughs> it's a, it's a you detail. didn't realize it. It's a rider, yeah. It is. Yeah, it's in the part so of the rider. You employ this fly as well, I see. <laughs> he owns everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, we we didn't know each other prior to this film, and uh, he's become one of my closest friends. Well, I, and that'd be foolish. weird if I just, like, spat. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's new, news, stamped, news to him. Stamped out yeah. here, like, I'm done with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, the answer is yes. Yes. That would be weird and... Definitely awkward for me. Really over the top. I mean, it seems like it would have to be a pretty intense uh, experience. I mean, obviously, 18 days filming. Now you guys are touring with the band. Like, it seems like it would have to be... Yeah, uh, yeah. Chemistry would have to develop pretty quickly. And, and also, like, doing all the music along with... I mean, we were really in the trenches, and, like, with this stuff. And, you know, uh, like, because you just... Yeah, you shoot these long days, and then we went back to our, like, little motel, and then we, like, learned the song because... You know, everything we had to record live and do in front of, like, live human beings. And I was terrified of that. I had no... I was really ill-prepared for that. We're still doing it live. And, he uh, never told me that when I when he gave me the part, like, that I, I really actually didn't. have to do this shit. Because I didn't think he was going to have to do it. Like, that's why I didn't tell it to him. I said, hey, man, you'd be so great for this part. Like, you know, we should work together. He actually was like, please let me work with you. And I was like, all right, I You guess. were growling. You were drooling on my shiz, growling, saying, I love your acting. Sure you walked please up to be me a part after, of my life. Uh, um, something and we're like, please, if at all possible, can I at some point in my life work with you? And I was I said, dragging you along the floor. You were clasping my leg. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, yeah, I had no, I, I had always kind of assumed that I would just hire a really, really good actor for the part, um, and then I ended up with this dude. Um, no, I, uh, and that somebody would be like off screen playing the music, and the, whoever was going to do it would be like acting like they were playing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I had already given him the role and we were sitting down, we were at a umami burger in LA and I was like, man, uh, I just have to ask you, do you, I mean, do you know how to play uh, any kind of music at all? I mean, even like a little guitar or something. I just wanted to see if he had any rhythm. Cause you, you look at him and you think <laughs> that dude has no rhythm, obviously. Uh, he was like, yeah, I've actually, I've been playing piano my whole life. And I was like, I stood up and I held him. In front of I a did. lot of people. For a really long time. People kept Awkwardly being like, long. like, whoa. Really uncomfortable. Yeah. I had to finally shove him off of me and like, dude, leave me alone. <laughs> he followed me out of there. Then we hugged again. And this, this time was like was the exact, <laughs> exact opposite of the movie. He stalked you, is what you're saying? <laughs> uh... Yeah, you know, he definitely stalked me. There's no doubt about that. Um, but uh, the fuck are you talking? You know, armor hoodie and everything. <laughs> yeah, it, that was actually that was completely. It was role reversal. It was, which is fun. I actually I roofied him. I roofied him at. The, <laughs> he woke up in Maryland, dressed as a as Jim with baby toy instruments taped to his hands. And you were standing over me in your pink moose moose fleece, moose fleece. <laughs> It actually kind of scared me, honestly, when I first got, like, the info, like, the press people were sending out the stuff about the movie. They're like, hey, you want to see this, uh, like, musical movie uh, with uh, this, this moose guy and stuff? I was like... Yeah, that shit is terrifying. Guy. Wait, people are well, saying that's well, as that's a right press note? They say, you want to see something with a moose guy? Yeah. Yeah. You, moose well, that, that would be anything. If that, that would be the thing that sells me. But, like, I'm the dude who, like, 
and usually hates musicals. Like they especially moose musicals. Moose musical would sell me. So, moose, <laughs> musicals. Yeah, exactly. That if you if you do more word combinations, that would actually sell me on it. But like <laughs> I, I musicals take me out of the movie so much when they people break from the action. Fuck do yeah. like the you song. You don't like it when they're like. Like, man, I'm just so frustrated sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sh- I can't. Shockingly, that takes me out of it. And so I was like, <laughs> initially amazing. I was like, oh, I don't know about this. And when I watched it, I was like, okay, this is in the movie. Like, that that completely, that will work for me. I can accept that. <laughs> and in fact, when you guys were recording the song in the car, that was like, okay, I'm fully in on this. This <laughs> this will do it. If they oh, can cool, actually man. record more music in the car, <laughs> yeah. like, if, if you actually recorded your album like that, I would actually be willing to buy it. <laughs> Dude, well, the truth is that we actually did sort of record it that way. Um, so you should buy it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the whole album was recorded in, in a, a car. car. I hear no. it came out this Tuesday or something. Yeah, yeah, it came out. Yeah. It, it came out uh, yesterday actually in stores and everything. It's uh, you can get it on iTunes. We have vinyl. It's called yeah. Brooklyn wow. Brothers the album, and uh, you know we we did uh, record it in a studio, but uh, I mean, but like, but like a m- mobile studio. We were traveling around the land. But not the soundtrack. Like you said, there, like there's the album, but there's also the soundtrack. There is also the soundtrack. Very true. And so, the soundtrack... Uh, why are you lying to the viewers? Because yeah. some of the soundtrack is, is from the studio. It's you don't have to tell the viewers that. You don't have to tell them Yeah, everything. just lie to them. They don't care. Don't tell the viewers they, everything. Viewers don't care. Yeah. Just, listen, everything was hand-woven. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> no, I just feel like this, this moose suit, I'm assuming, is what you're referring to. That's what I meant. I was he talking about the moose suit. moose suit. Thanks, man. Think, did you really save totally me? Right I did, yeah. And I got I got to say also <laughs> the uh, the scene where you get stabbed was one of the most shocking scenes in any movie I've one seen. One of my this favorite year. moments. <laughs> like, I just, and I've, I like I've just seen Prometheus. That over and I've over. seen The Dark Knight. I've seen Looper. Like, I've seen all this shit. Wait, you mean in Prometheus, you didn't think that they were going to, the thing was going to get him when they were like, oh, cute little oh, snake dude, creature? I didn't think that they were going to get him who's been so jaded that essentially the <laughs> last time I can really remember being scared at a movie besides like paranormal activity was uh, arachnophobia in the second grade. I'm that, like, that thing scared the shit out of me. And I was in New York City where there are no spiders. Yeah. And I was walking around and I know literally this is what happened. I was standing out outside my friend's house and we were talking about the movie and like I don't know, I was like all jacked up from arachnophobia, and then you know those little like spots on the ground that, that are like you know gum that's been like rolled over for mm-hmm. a century. Like I, I stepped on one of those that had like a little bit of like a like had a little height to it, and just enough so I'd feel it in my shoe. And I was like, oh my god! And I jumped up in the air. I was like, spider. Anyway, it's a great story. I, I'm writing my book about it. I, I go the exact opposite in that I grew up in uh, New Mexico, and there are fucking spiders everywhere. Yeah, like black widows would be would in my house, live brown recluses, all that stuff. And Jesus. so, uh, yeah, like that film like played right into my sensibilities and why. Yeah, I remember that. My dad's so terrified of spiders. Mexico. Oh, yeah. My dad's like a fifth degree black belt, and like, <laughs> if he thought a fucking spider was on him, he'd be like, Yeah! <laughs> and you wouldn't want him to be anywhere near him because he was like probably doing blow? like a flying roundhouse kick, right. like towards a spider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, if he thought a spider was like, on him. He's like in the middle of a room full of people, and then like you w- watch him like walk out, and everyone's like, oh, Everybody's like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you are in the conversation spider. with arachnophobia. Uh, Think about that. And it was just like one of those moments I was like, What the fuck is going on? Like, I was like, This just drew dramatically changed my impression of this movie entirely <laughs> absolutely man uh the other thing i thought was kind of interesting <laughs> was um i mean there's there is a romantic story going on there's you and your ex-girlfriend there's you and ariel in the movie but it's actually it kind of reminded me almost of um jay and silent bob in a sense that it's almost like there's more of a hetero life mate sort of story going on was that is that an intentional angle that you're looking to create with the movie or is that just something that you guys you just fall in love with me during yeah. filming I, I deeply <laughs> deeply fell in love with you during the filming no i i think it's a yeah it's a it is a love story it's a love story be- about two kindred spirits that are like like opposite sides of the coin essentially that you know, when I was writing it, I, I wasn't trying to do something autobiographical as, as much as uh, the spirit of, of kind of like the struggle that I had seen, my, you know, my friends go through and I was going through of these two sides of me that were like, you know, one side that was like insecure and just waiting to give up and was so, you know, had open ears for the critics and and the other side of me that was probably a little braver than I should be and, and forged forward regardless of anything and said fuck it and i separated that into two characters and you know 
had them battle it out and they're you know they're kind of they're linked they're they're lost without each other essentially and i think you need both both sides of those to keep you grounded and to keep you you know maybe a little courageous you know i I hope you wear your cape during all the shows because that, that, that would that, like <laughs> much that. like you know i would buy the album uh if you recorded in the car if you actually perform in a cape on stage i would buy a ticket That's to see that it would be awesome if our whole audience came in in capes that would be <laughs> awesome let's do it <laughs> unfortunately people have to see the movie before they can go to the show i mean it's now true, now true. they can start doing it yeah. but beforehand they're just like to come in and off the cold then, uh, you're right. I, I love it he's like i'm on the show i'm on the show why else would I be wearing this fucking awesome cape if I was on the show? I mean, who? I I, I would let you in if you wore yeah, a cape. Like, yeah. who, I thought it was a pretty good argument. Or the flip side being like, I wouldn't want to fuck with somebody in a cape. Like, <laughs> just in general, yeah. stay away it's from a safe, caped like, people. I mean, Grown men in capes, yeah. stay away. You're either like Batman or you're somebody who's crazy. So, you know, either way, I don't want to fuck with <laughs> It's that just safe to assume that don't fuck with the dude in the cape. <laughs> <laughs> How has it been um, touring as a band now after the movie? Like, is it kind of a surreal experience that you did this sort of like, I don't know, uh, art imitating life that's now art again? Like- I'll tell you what's surreal is when uh, we show up in Portland last night and we're all getting ready to play, and I look over at Michael Weston and he is fucking wasted, <laughs> like can't story. even can't even see straight, and I'm like, yep. oh, all right, I he has a hard understand. enough time playing this baby toys. It's true, I'm not, I don't practice at all. He doesn't. He won't do it. I'm immune to practice. I, I try and force him to, man, and he yeah. will. Some people can, like, you know, they can contract practice. I don't, it doesn't happen to me. I never will He's get it. He's immune to it. Here's the real question, though. But wait, I wanted to say, in, in my defense, <laughs> the beers in Portland are so much stronger than the beers in real life. Yes. <laughs> they, are, they are, like, four times as potent. I had three beers... Which usually I can be okay with for an evening. I had three beers and it was like I had ten beers. I was like almost <laughs> on the floor and my hands were swollen. I couldn't play my baby toys. Yeah, our, our beers are like moonshine, basically. They are. So like, what happens really here, man? Like it's, it's literally it's a land of hard, like, it's carbonated real moonshine. Real fucking <laughs> men. <laughs> fucking settle up, man. And Mike is smaller than, than most men. <laughs> so, so it, it, You can't really tell, but you can fit me in the palm of your hand. He's like a, th- a thumbelino. Yeah. That, that's a, that's true. That's an alternate band title right there. I know. <laughs> if, you, if you guys get so big, you know, like the Beastie Boys, you need to play small shows in towns before you come. We'll call you ourselves know. Thumbelino. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But the real the real question I have is, so when you go to your show, um, do you tell people that Scott Weiland is going to be playing be- with you? Dude, like, that is fucking such a good that idea. That is a good idea, man. That is it a is a good idea. idea. I agree. It is a I'm good serious. idea. The only thing Because we only don't have enough is... of a draw right now. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is, is that in the movie, they didn't actually have to face the fans, like, uh, but we would true. actually have to face the fans. Yeah. yeah. And that would be ugly. Be yeah, it would, it, would be, it would be tough. I, I think it would be a completely believable story that he's off the wagon and you guys have to fill in for him. Like, I would be like, oh, that's a bit of a disappointment, but I can see that being the case, you know. Um, now that the movie's coming out, the music is out, you guys are touring, what is sort of like the future hold for you guys? I mean, do you guys want to continue just as a band? Do you want to make another movie? Is this going to be like Stadium, Blues baby. Brothers? Yankee Stadium. I, you know what? I don't know. I think we're we're down for whatever kind of is around the corner. I mean, we'll we'll see how it uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. You know, it's exciting it's, stuff. It's already been like a total dream. Like you yeah, know, absolutely. It's like uh, especially for this dude who uh, you know did music all his life, and then like you know all his bands just like fell apart and like, <laughs> failed miserably and stuff, and like it's, and then it's uh, so true. <laughs> and no, he loves it, and, you know. And then like we at the end of all this stuff, and he wrote all this beautiful music, and it's like it's it's just like I love I love that story. Like he's a guy who like wrote music all his life, like was in bands all his life, you know, left that world and went into this world, wrote a movie, still came from a place of music, and. uh and you know the album came out so good and we got this you know ridiculous like record label came in warner brothers and you know and then we walk in there in la and we we walk into the 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 halls of this place and they you know and he opens his vinyl like in front of like the record execs (laughs) and he's like on the floor (laughs) what is this drop the mic walk out that's what i do what are we back in the 60s yeah it was it was awesome. It was awesome. No, I love it. It might have like, been a life dream of mine to like have a vinyl LP, man. Like yeah. like my whole He's like life. A little kid, man. 
It was. It was pretty. It was and then pretty he shot himself just like and a little I, kid. And I vomited and opened up involuntarily every orifice and just kind of fell on the ground, quivering. And oh, that sounds man. about right. That was. Why it was the end. Why are you gonna say opened up every orifice? <laughs> So it's, me you gotta what do you every think I, with I was talking I was talking about the pores on my on my hands. What are you what? Her, gross, <laughs> gross. <laughs> gross. Um so where can people find out more information about the the movie, the music? Do you guys have Twitters or anything people can find out more information I about just you guys? On Twitter like That's what I heard, ago. yeah. Yeah, he literally he literally I think he's done 3 tweets. I did and it, like I'm exhausted now. What what <laughs> like, what, what, what is your tw- what is your Twitter handle? Fuck, man. I don't even Mine remember. Mine is my Ryan Onan NYC. I am Mike Weston, I think is what it is. All right. I oh, am Mike I'll Weston. put I'll put it down here just in case. Yeah, yeah. Do it. and the and the website um is um brooklynbrothersmovie.com and it comes Very out simple. here at the where, what it, it's a Seattle International Film Festival Cinemas. Yes. Yeah. Sif Cinema, yeah. Um just this Friday. Sif. Just say Sif. We yeah. all know what it is. Do you guys right know Sif? Everybody we know says Sif. Sif. Everyone right. says Sif. Yeah. Yo, I love the Sif. Seattle Film Festival. Love it. Awesome. I've been there twice already, and I, really? I cool. yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, you awesome. can I didn't get. I didn't come up here before. Uh, in the he had had enough. He'd been yeah. touring around with me. Like he <laughs> was, was enough. You he, have to shut yeah. the door on him finally, because yeah. he will keep trying to put his little <laughs> hairy leg in it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I wish That's you my uh, left leg. Uh, your hairy leg is your just left my, one. My little yeah. my little hairy clean. leg. We want we want to leave him wanting more. You know. <laughs> yeah. people worry about that show. <laughs> thank you guys so much for yeah, doing man. this, oh, and uh, good luck with uh, music and uh, the movie. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Awesome. Man. Right on. That's fun. Stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all